Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus again today. This is episode 4 of 5 in our series on flight. So far we've talked about how airplanes fly, you know, how they stay up there. And we've also talked about how they're regulated and how the industry even started. And we've even talked about how air traffic controllers work. That's only in the first three episodes. If you haven't seen those, go back, check them out. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss them in the future. But today we're going to talk about huge advancements in aviation. The 20th century was an incredible time for aeronautics and flight. Numerous advancements pushed all sorts of things around the aviation industry into possibility. When it comes to some of the biggest advancements of the 20th century, I mean, there are so many in flight. Side note, by the way, this is by no means an extensive and exhaustive list of this. There are so many different things in aeronautics, and they aren't in any necessarily any order. This is just some really cool ones that we found. So we've already covered in depth the Wright brothers and their historical flights and all of that. I mean, that's obviously huge. Just the invention of an aircraft is a big one. Let's fast forward a bit. You know, what comes after that? What do other people take and build using that original plan? The J-13, also known as the Junkers F-13, is a German-built airplane. It was designed by Hugo Junkers. Great name for building airplanes, right? It was the first commercial all-metal plane and designed in 1919. It was designed to accompany passengers in an enclosed cabin. It had seat belts. It had windows. This was 1919. They'd only just learned to fly a little bit ago. They already had enclosed cabins with seat belts and windows and all sorts of stuff. According to aviation historian Dick Hallian, the F-13 was essentially the first aircraft to anticipate the onset of modern air transport. A cantilever aircraft, all metal, low wing, monoplane, and streamlined by the standards of the day. Cantilever means that it didn't have struts. There weren't like things attaching the wings. The Ryan NYP was another cool plane. That's the Spirit of St. Louis. You've probably seen that in historical images because that was Charles A. Lindbergh's plane. He flew this Wright J5C powered, highly modified version of a conventional M2 strut based monoplane on a direct flight from Long Island, New York to Paris, France. That's 3,600 miles. It took him 33 hours and 30 minutes. This was in 1927. They'd only had planes for like 25 years. It's crazy. After this, aviation would change forever. Lindbergh was immediately famous, became this world icon. Applications for pilot licenses in the United States tripled. The number of licensed aircraft quadrupled. Like 10 years later in the late 1930s, the Boeing 314 comes out, sometimes known as the Clipper. It was an incredible new aircraft. They called it the Flying Boat, and it changed the way that the world viewed air travel. It had a 3,500 mile range and a space for 74 paying passengers. It established mail and passenger routes across the North Atlantic, the South Atlantic, even the Pacific Ocean. The flight deck had a lounge, a dining area, places to sleep, dressing rooms, and luxurious things. I mean, this is a crazy aircraft in the 30s. Of course, then World War II broke out not long after that, so the Boeing 314 was only really flown for about three years. But based on just 30 some years, you know, 40 years of aircraft, they'd already started to create what we would recognize today as, you know, a commercial airliner. Then during World War II, it became even more important. Aircraft were hugely influential in World War II. It was the beginning of a new era of warfare. You know, battleships and things, those were the past. Aircraft carriers, those were the future. You needed to have good aircraft. The B-29, you've probably heard of, it was almost single-handedly ended the war with Japan with a little help from, you know, little boy and fat man. But it was one of the first airplanes to have a pressurized cabin, which is essential today for commercial flying and just flying in general. I mean... Imagine a cabin without cabin pressure, you wouldn't even be able to fly above 10,000 feet. It would be too cold, it'd be too dry, there'd be not enough oxygen and not enough air pressure. 
Uh, other technological advancements at the time were remote firing systems for turret machine guns inside of the airplanes, dual wheeled tricycle landing gear so they could land more easily and tuck those landing gears back up. It was one of the first U.S. bombers with integrated radar in the airplane. And years later, new engines were added so it could fly around the world non-stop. It was the first plane to do that. Not long after that, also in the 40s, the Bell X-1 comes out. And this bad boy became the first manned airplane to travel faster than the speed of sound in, on October 14, 1947. Four rocket engines propelled the X-1 to a speed of 700 miles an hour, or about Mach 1.06. And it was modeled after a 50 caliber machine gun bullet. It looks awesome likely seen pictures of this one as well. And aside from just going fast and getting to go really long, you can combine those two things and get something that everyone recognizes that again changed how we think of airplanes and that's the Boeing 747, the original jumbo jet. And even that, when you look at it compared to some of the biggest planes in the world today, at the time the 747 was huge and now it's kind of average, right? It revolutionized commercial aviation, transported over three and a half billion people to various destinations, and originally was designed without computers. They made 75,000 different drawings, and the largest building ever constructed was built just to have a place to build the 747. But beyond individual planes, there were tons of technological advancements that made commercial flying as good as it is now. Cabin pressurization, huge, huge deal. But so were things like black boxes, which were developed in the 1950s by an Australian scientist named Dr. David Warren. He was involved in the investigation surrounding a crash of the world's first jet-powered commercial airplane. It was known as the Comet. And he realized, you know, it'd be kind of useful, have a recording device on board the airplane picking up what's happening while it's in flight. Then you can figure it out when you find that thing. Obviously, never good to think of a plane crashing, but this technology is still relevant today, and it's something that it's the first thing you hear about when a plane crash happens, did we find the black box? Where is the black box? There's also something even more simple than that, though. The winglets. If you've been on an airplane and you look out the window at the plane's wings, sometimes they have the little upturned winglet thing. In 1976, there was an energy crisis going around, probably heard of it. It sent fuel prices through the roof, and NASA aerodynamicist Richard Whitcomb published a paper showing that a wing with a little tip fold on the wing at the very end, called a winglet, could reduce drag on the airplane by about 20%. Drag, you may remember from episode one, one of the things airplanes have to fight against. The reduction in drag could mean higher cruise speeds, but it also could mean lower fuel costs. These are just some of the technologies that helped propel, see what I did in there? The commercial transportation business forward. Once you open up the idea of airplane flight and all of these different businesses get involved, they all start trying to one-up each other and create this new industry, which then regulations have to be put on top of. And we ended up with what we have today, which is a pretty complicated monster. But there's also stuff like I don't know, that everybody remembers from airplane flight, like the Concorde and jets and all sorts of cool, super fast, super sleek airplanes. But what happened to the Concorde? You don't fly it anymore, right? We're going to talk about that tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe and come back. Obviously, we mentioned a lot of Boeing in this episode. Yes, they are our sponsor, but full disclosure, we don't have to say exactly what they want to say. We get to talk about whatever we want. So even if you did this research yourself, you would see that some of these airplanes, they're really important in the history of aviation. And Boeing has been doing it since the beginning. So thanks again to Boeing for helping us bring all of this great flight stuff down to you. Boeing, building the future one century at a time. Let us know down in the comments if you have a favorite airplane. I mean, I've always wanted to ride in a Dreamliner. They look awesome but let us know what you want. You can also subscribe so you get all of the Test Tube Plus episodes you could ever want. Make sure you check us out over on iTunes as well. Come find us on Twitter. We're at Test Tube and I am at Trace Dominguez. See you tomorrow.